Okay, welcome to the software side of the Dego Deviant um, guide to system memory upgrading. Okay, so for this tutorial, I'll be using Windows XP, the home edition. Um, the same steps for this tutorial should apply if you're running on any version of Windows from Windows 95 onwards. Alright, now I'll now bring up the task manager. The task manager can be invoked by pressing Ctrl, Alt, and Delete on your keyboard. Alright, so here we are, Windows Task Manager. As you can see, there's a menu bar with some menu items. Those I'll leave you to figure out on your own. But for now, what we're going to focus on are the tabs that sit under the menu right now. Okay, these are called tabs. Each tab, when selected, will give you a different cross-sectional view of your system's resource consumption. In the first tab, Applications, which we're in right now, we'll see the foreground programs that are running. Foreground programs are programs that can be interacted with. For example, if I were to start WinRAR, the uh, Windows Archiver, you'll see that a new task has been added to the list. Right? From this view, you can now decide which foreground applications you wish to open and which ones you wish to close. All right? um, to terminate the, cho the chosen program, all you have to do is select the program name and click the End Task button at the bottom right here. And there you go. Windows are closed. Right. So in this now in the second tab processes, you'll see all of the programs that are running, foreground and background. To, this view is similar to the previous one in the sense that all the foreground apps are displayed, but it also displays background processes. These are processes that cannot be interacted with directly. This view shows how much of a computer's memory resource each program is consuming. That's it in this column here. Let's sort in ascending order from least memory usage to most memory usage, okay? This program here, SVCH, SVC host, for example, is a background process. We cannot interact with it on any level, okay? It is just a background process and it is run by the system. Um, Explorer.exe, on the other hand, is a background process, but it is this, your desktop, your icons, your start menu, everything is Explorer. All right, you can interact with that. Um, task Manager, for example, this is exactly what we're in here. It's a foreground program, and you can interact with it. Look, right now, I'm pressing menu items. I'm changing tabs. I'm interacting with a foreground application. This is an example of that. WinRAR, if I were to open it again, is a foreground application as well. So I think you get the idea from that. The end. The end task button has been replaced with the end process button, but it still serves the same purpose. Okay, simply click on a task and say end process. You'll be given a confirmation. Click OK. Um, this I wouldn't recommend you doing this willy nilly though, since some of these processes need to be running in order for Windows to function properly. Okay, the third tab is the one we're interested in: performance. This tab gives you a report of your CPU as well as your RAM usage. Right? These reports are presented in real time and are updated by the second. As you can see, every second it gives me a new readout of my CPU usage, my RAM usage, everything. All right? On the physical memory section, you'll get a readout of your total physical memory and exactly how much of it is available to you relative to the processes that are running. Okay? So, all of these processes are using some of your physical memory and this figure at the bottom this this figure at the top here is all the memory you have in your system and this figure at the bottom here is how much you have available to you alright to issue new commands to new programs and everything um, these values however they're, cal they're, they're presented in kilobytes um, to calculate to convert these, these values to megabytes, you're just going to have to do a simple conversion, right? Now, 1 megabyte is 1,024 kilobytes. People might say it's 1,000, but it's actually 1,024 because the computer uses a base 2 number system, alright? It doesn't have flat 1,000 just like that, no. Um, so let's say you want to calculate exactly how much memory I have in total, alright? What we're going to do, I'm going to introduce some of the program now called the Windows Calculator. You probably use it a few times, alright? and as well as a run feature. So let's use mine as an example. We're going to go to start, run, 
and then type in calc c a l c and press ok we'll see that the windows calculator has now come up so we want to convert this value here to megabytes so let's see one zero four six six zero four divided by ten twenty four Alright, as you can see, I have approximately 1 gigabyte of RAM. Because 1024 kilobytes is 1 megabyte, and 1024 megabytes is 1 gigabyte, okay? Now, um, I kind of fast forward forwarded through the whole tutorial thing, the installation. So, um, my, my computer previously had 512 megabytes. I just added another 512 today, like a few minutes before I started this. This, this task manager tutorial, alright? So, and I want to find out exactly how much is available to me. So let's see. 7, 3, 2, 8, 5, 6. 8, 5, 6. Alright, we'll just use the value that, uh, that that came up instantaneously as we were typing in the, um, the value. Divided by 1024. And I have 716 megabytes of RAM available to me right now. Okay? And clear that. Um, there are there are another other two tabs like networking that will monitor your network activities and users. If you have a multi-user PC, you will and any and any other person is, is logged on at the time, you will see their username here and their status, and you can do a cool thing. But but um, we'll get into that another time. All right. So that was your tutorial on the task manager. Hope you learned something.